Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Declassified here on Smile to Jannah. I came across this in my files. I keep files on them. All right guys, let's jump straight into this. We got a lot to cover. COVID-19. That's the name given to the pandemic that we are currently facing. It comes from a family of viruses and the umbrella term is called coronavirus. So altogether there's like seven of them. You got SARS, MERS, etc. Yeah. And currently there are no cures that have been recommended by the World Health Organization. Now although this is not part of the video, but I still wanted to get this out there for people that are genuinely scared and that might not make it till the end of the video. Now here are the stats today when I'm recording the video. Yeah, here you guys can see are the people that have died from this virus and here are the people who have survived from this virus. So statistically you're eight times more likely to survive than to pass away. Also another thing that you guys may be aware of, the virus is fatal if you are immune compromised, if you have pre-existing conditions or if you're old. Uh, otherwise it just feels like it's just a long flu and you could possibly recover within two weeks. Yeah. So just something else out there for those of you that are really worrying, thinking is some sort of crazy thing. And to be fair, I wouldn't really blame you because the media has really been capitalizing on this, especially the tabloids. Yeah, as you guys can see, initially, even when I saw this trending, I thought, what on earth is it? What is this zombie? Vi I th genuinely thought it was some sort of zombie virus. But again, that doesn't mean that it still can't be fatal because even if you're young and you contract it, uh, you can still affect the elderly in your homes or even you know you may have children that are immune compromised. But anyway, I'm not a doctor and I'm sure there's plenty of other videos that deal with this sort of stuff. Let's get into the juicy bits because I don't know about you, but there's a lot of funky stuff going on and a lot of it doesn't add up. Alright guys, so conspiracy theories. First of all, let's sort out and contextualize what that actually means. If a person says I don't believe in any conspiracy theories, they are assuming that whatever the government says is the truth. Yeah, but if you go by the ex-president of the biggest superpower on the planet, here's what he says. Look, let me say, politicians have always lied. But it used to be if you caught them lying, they'd be like, oh man. <laughs> now they just keep on lying. They, they just Naturally, a conspiracy theory will never be considered fact until the person that you are doing the conspiracy theory against admits it openly themselves. And that happens by governments in 30 to 50 years, depending when certain documents become declassified. And we know many things have happened in the past and the government's ad admitted openly to it, yeah? Be it MKUltra, be it, be it trying to assassinate world leaders. Okay, let's get into this now. Warnings and predictions. So you got Bill Gates. This guy has been at the forefront of warning the world about a looming pandemic. Here's a video of his uh, that he did four years ago on TEDx. If anything kills over 10 million people in the next few decades, it's most likely to be a highly infectious virus. Here's another clip of him saying something very similar, however also alluding to the fact that it can be made by undesirables. I think uh, an epidemic either naturally caused or intentionally caused is the most likely thing to cause say 10 million excess deaths. The second warning, this was uh, two months before COVID-19 surfaced and this was a simulation called 
Event 201. It began in healthy looking pigs, months, perhaps years ago. A new coronavirus spread silently within herds. Infected people got a respiratory illness with symptoms ranging from mild flu-like signs to severe pneumonia. Experts agree unless it is quickly controlled, it could lead to a severe pandemic, an outbreak that circles the globe. The details of the simulation were eerily similar to what we are facing today. And number three, even on Netflix, there was a series called Explained. And in season two, episode seven, this was aired one month before the outbreak. And they also predicted that the next outbreak could take place in a live market in China. So what does this all mean? Bill Gates did it? Or Event 201 did it? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. So what I'm saying is Bill Gates, amongst many other professionals, have been telling us that this is going to happen. It's only a matter of time. And let's be frank, we are not ready for it. And if it does happen, it's going to take ages to come up with a vaccine and millions will be affected. We're not ready for the next epidemic. Uh, and the, it's pretty surprising how little preparedness there is for it. There are only three things that are inevitable in this world, death, taxes and flu pandemics. We've done the math on this. We estimate there are about five new emerging diseases happen somewhere on the planet every year and that rate is accelerating. So it is inevitable that they will become pandemics. All right, mate, calm down. Yeah, let's 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 relax there for a minute. Yeah, what these guys are doing is like saying, you know what, guys, the back door of our house, there's no lock on it, mate. There's no lock on the back door. A thief can come any day, mate. A thief can come any day. Guys, we're very vulnerable through the back door, mate. We need to do something. The back door is very vulnerable. Guys, if somebody comes in through the back door, that's it, we're finished. All of our stuff is at the back. We're gonna lose thousands, mate. We're gonna lose thousands. Naturally, you're thinking, Bill was just warning us, and I'm sure he was, yeah? But there are people that are gonna be watching this and going, hang on a minute, it's going to take years to recover from that. People aren't prepared for it. And people know roughly where it can start from. So there's going to be no kind of suspicious circumstances. This is a brilliant setup for a criminal mastermind. It's literally done all the, the, the blueprint is pretty much there. Reuters has reported this Yeah, it's, I'm not just picking this out of my pocket. So Reuters says that Israel was working on a strain of coronavirus called the avian flu. Yeah. Now, because they were working on that, it makes it easier for them to develop a vaccine. Well, isn't that just a healthy coincidence? Hmm? It's also curious that at the time of recording this video, Israel has zero casualties. Coincidence? Maybe. <laughs> I'm not saying that these guys are responsible for it. I, I don't know who's done it. Again, I'm just putting stuff out there that is questionable. Yeah, that should be looked into. I don't know. I don't know what that implies or what that means before I get called anti-Semitic. Right, let's move on to the main part of the video. Who benefits from all this? There's a saying. It says if you want to find the culprit of anything, ask who benefits from this the most? Num let's start off number one, Western nations, yeah, in particular America. When it comes to biological research and biological weapons, the US is ahead. When it comes to using biological weapons in the past, yeah, there's many incidents. Here is an article by Business Insider that talk about the US uh, testing germ warfare on their own people, yeah in particular they're black citizens. If America is cheesed off alongside other European countries, is a, if they are cheesed off with China and Iran, lo and behold, where did this virus come from? China! And who are the top two countries that are suffering the most? China and Iran. Coincidence? I don't know. 
Number two, the elite. Now living in the UK, I'm often thinking why on earth is the government so slow, yeah, amongst many other countries. But upon reflection, when the undesirables of the community as seen by the elite are, they're called leeches, yeah, leeching of us old people, uh, the weak people and the ill people. So this disease, <laughs> this disease randomly pops up and lo and behold it's just attacking the quote unquote undesirables, I'm not calling them undesirables but these people are, yeah, and it fits in well with the whole depopulation agenda. Now before you guys start saying Flair Pedek this guy's getting into a mad one, let me give you an eerie quote by Prince Philip, yeah, from Prince Philip of the UK, this was his quote from 1988 and the reference is the Guardian, let's see, let's see what he said, yeah, in the event that I am reincarnated I would like to return as a deadly virus to contribute something to solving overpopulation. Now some people might say it's a joke but it seems like a very eerie well calculated thought out joke. What do you see as the biggest challenges in, in conservation? Yeah, the, the growing human population. And actually he's not the only one that said this but I need to then find their quotes and the references and it's long yeah. Number three, the people that stand to gain are certain industries, you ask yourself which industries are making the most during these lockdowns, you've got supermarkets that are making loads of money, you've got these big corporations yeah, by doing these online conferences and stuff, your media, these, these platforms like Google and Microsoft, you also got Netflix and music platforms that are making a lot of money. Now naturally you might be thinking yeah but I don't get the link, like what's the Prime Minister or President getting from this? Well those of you that follow just, just basic politics, if you and I or whoever was to run for leadership we would need funding and we would get funding from these corporations, yeah, they give funding and backing to certain people that they hope will win in the hope that when they do they will get favours yeah, in return and naturally if I was a supermarket and I mean every day my stock is being sold out and I'm, I am making millions, would I want this to be solved quickly or would I want it to be dragged on for a little longer? <laughs> well of course I would yeah, but obviously if I was sick in the head goes without saying. Don't you think that these people would capitalize on something like this? Of course! And fourthly and this is my favorite point that I actually start off with but I've left it to the end and I don't know how many of you have stuck around and that is the governments, regardless of whatever governments but more specifically western governments. Now bear with me here yeah because this is a genius point frankly. Governments want control, people don't want to give control, so how do governments get control then? Well they use a ingredient or a method that's never let them down in the past and that is fear. A politics of fear and resentment and retrenchment takes hold and demagogues promise simple fixes to complex problems. It's like the secret ingredient of governments, they love you know using fear to manipulate the people into giving up their freedoms and giving up autonomy and giving up you know other things, their ethics, ideals or whatever just so they can feel safe again. In the past the way they've done it is through terrorism, yeah, war all is fair in love and war you've heard yeah and even Obama here is admitting, hey we tortured some folks mate yeah. In the immediate aftermath of 9-11 uh, we did some things that were wrong, we did a whole lot of things that were right but we tortured some folks. Even Trump. 
We have totally destabilized the Middle East. It's a disaster. Oh. Really? <laughs> you don't say. Is that why they're angry? But of course, there, there can't be a logical reason. Yeah, surely we just blame the Quran. Yeah, we just, we just blame the religion because <laughs> it's got to be that. Yeah, it can't be uh, people are cheesed off at you destroying their livelihoods. We've secured the oil, and therefore a small number of U.S. troops will remain in the area where they have the oil, and we're going to be protecting it, and we'll be deciding what we're going to do with it in the future. Now that being said. If you guys are following the news, there is a lot being covered about China controlling it, curtailing it, and now people are going out and about, they're free, they're happy, and people here in the West, we're being told it could last up to half a year to two a year, yeah? And it's gonna be worse, yeah? And naturally people here are gonna be like, hang on just a minute right here. What's so different about us and China right here? Yeah, what's different? But then the governments here, they know. Yeah, they know that they cannot apply the same draconian things that China has. I mean, China, alongside other nations like Israel, have admitted that now they are going to be tracking people's phones. Yeah, invading privacy because hey, 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 hey. it's the greater good, man. Don't you guys want to be safe? Yeah, well, that's why we gotta track your phones. That's the only way. Yeah, yeah, we we don't want to die from this flu. We don't want to die. Save us. Save us. And if somebody says, nah, but 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 what they're doing is they're taking your privacy. What? You want my granddad to die? I don't want my granddad to die, mate. What? You want my little kid that's immune compromised to die? Are you mad? And people start infighting. But the government wants people to say, look, follow the Chinese model and the Chinese were using violence and aggression and they went down hard but again that's not really affiliated with the West but ideally that's what every government wants powers that can be used to control their citizens as draconian as possible but in the West we pride ourselves on freedom so naturally if governments started doing that there would be an uprising however if you let the disease carry on, people become frustrated and angry. Pubs are closing, gyms are closing, schools have closed, yeah? People are getting depressed, they're staying at home and they're going mental because let's face it, in the society that we're living in, the only way we get by, even in relationships, it's not by interfacing and spending quality times. Nah mate, there's none of that. Even these romantic comedies, yeah, what is it? It's doing activities. That's what you do. Even in these movies, there's there's a wedding that's taking place, or there's some sort of threat and danger, and the hero falls in love with the uh, hero uh, heroine. I don't know what the word is, mate. You know the woman in it, yeah. I don't know. People naturally are now having to stay at home, and they're just not used to it. They're used to staying busy by doing stuff. Yeah, there's things that people have suppressed, and people work. People work just to get over their breakup. People work to get over somebody passing away or something that, you know, the lack of purpose. We work ourselves and now suddenly we're told we can't go to work. We, we, we can't numb this by going to the pub. Naturally, society is going to start falling apart. I had a lot of trauma going like during uh, the process of becoming champion. I lost like uncles who were close trainers and lost children at birth and stuff like that. And I put it all to the back of my mind because I didn't want to think about it. I never had time to think about it at that time. Yeah. I was too focused on achieving my goals. All my eggs were in one basket. Yeah. And that basket was to defeat Klitschko and become the heavyweight champion of the world. And I knew that when I did that, then I wasn't going to have a goal anymore. Yeah. And there was nothing more to strive for. And it all came crashing down. And naturally they will get be, become more and more desperate and then the government's gonna come as the savior. Ah, yes, we will now do what China is doing. To, uh, we're doing it for you lot. But the problem now guys is this and this is what the experts say that when the governments bring in these draconian measures for certain uh, situations 
When that situation passes, the draconian measures remain behind. And that's where these dystopian movies that have predicted such things like Equilibrium and um, The Giver and Elysium, V for Vendetta, Matrix, all of these seem eerily prophetic. Yeah, We as Muslims know that society will become worse and worse and worse till ultimately the ultimate depiction of evil personified will arrive and he will be called the Antichrist or the Jal. Now naturally before he comes things naturally will become worse. Yeah, it only makes sense. I don't know about you, we seem to be going through a very interesting turn in our history. Pubs have never closed, not even during the war, even the Kaaba. No one can go near the Kaaba. The mosques are now closed. Yeah, it's a very interesting time that we're going through. It does make sense that the world is heading towards one government, one army, one currency, kind of uh, a, a global, a global country as it were. And viruses facilitate this. I'll give you an example. In order for there to be a one government sort of thing and to have control over people, you need a cashless a currency. And naturally during the current pandemic, the economy is taking a dive. And what are they saying? Look at these articles in mainstream newspapers. What are they saying? Oh, cash it's such a problem, it's dirty, yeah, it's dirty, it's dangerous mate because it, you know you get your viruses on there. Oh no, online currency seems to be the logical solution, yeah, it's a logical solution. But the problem with that is it depends who has control of that, yeah. Your wealth can just be deleted or inaccessible to you if you are an undesirable in the community, yeah, if you're anti-government or whatnot. So that's that's one aspect, yeah. The other thing is we still somewhat have freedoms, yeah, but there are certain chemicals that can control us, yeah, that can subjugate us. Now without getting into um, these sorts of things, even when you watch these dystopian movies, yeah, Equilibrium or The Giver, the way they control society is by having regular injections of these sorts of things. Yeah, so um, naturally what people are going towards now is once a vaccine comes there's already discussions of making it obligatory. In fact even the previous um, vaccinations have become obligatory. Anyone who speaks out against them is censored. In fact, even on YouTube and on other sites, if you speak out against vaccinations, yo, you, you just can't do that. Ultimately, you get people to say, yo, if we are to stay safe, we need regular injections. At the moment, obviously, it's it's not that serious. But from the warnings that you've heard from these experts, they're saying we need to get ready for loads of these diseases to be coming now. Yeah, and when they start becoming more and more severe, and more and more traumatizing, people are, go are gonna give up many of their rights until it's just you you're just going around putting stuff in your body and not asking why. Every other year democracy takes a hit, ultimately the, the one percent, the elite, those in power, whatever name you want to give them, they want something called an, a new world order. Uh, create uh... Uh, a new world order. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. There's a need for a new world order but it has different characteristics. Never before has a new world order had to be assembled from so many different perceptions. Bush kept said and it was a phrase that I often use myself that we needed a new world order. A new world is emerging it is a new world order. I strongly believe India will be a central actor in the new world order. There you go. And this 
rise in technology that is facilitating smart cities, AI and you know virtual reality or, or neural links you know going into your brain or having chips in your in your hands these things are now slowly becoming a reality but the more technological we become the the more it means that it, these systems can be hacked they can be controlled at the moment it's very difficult to control you yeah sonic waves and this and that but if things are done using technology it's just so much more easier frankly you know what i'm saying those people that have held fast to the rope of allah you guys will notice living on less staying at home not relying on constantly doing activities referring to the book of allah to solve your solutions and not intoxicants all of this is now coming into use guys but those people that go out party disobey Allah and now suddenly they're being told to stay at home suddenly they're being told that you know all their places that they enjoy hanging out has now suddenly been closed a lot of people are finding this difficult to handle so that is one of the solutions that I would say yeah it is very difficult after the age of 25 for you to change your way of thinking the only two ways that you could do it is one if you undergo trauma the death of a loved one or a broken relationship or something or number two through constant reaffirmation and repetition i mean that's how propaganda is done to to sell us stuff like well even the war to sell us the war in iraq or sell us a product is constant repetition even music constant repetition of of um, sexuality and aggression and violence and stuff like this so you can also repeat positive things like if you're constantly reading the Quran constantly reading Salah constantly uh, going to gatherings yeah constantly reaffirming that Allah is in control Allah is in control now don't get me wrong a practical solution uh, you got some people saying oh just just believe in Allah brother just trust in Allah yeah, everything will happen just there's such a lazy answer it's such a lazy answer yeah the Prophet Sallallahu did not just stay at home and just make dua yeah he was constantly in the move yeah be it in battles be it you know speaking with world leaders being uh, being uh, giving dawah he he was constantly doing what was in his power yeah but we oh yeah oh don't worry the, the world's coming to an end now our day of judgment what a lazy answer yeah these things really cheese me off yeah really uh, frustrate me because you don't know when the day of judgment is going to come it might be uh, another thousand years away might be another hundred years away who knows yeah we have to do what is in our power to educate ourselves and save the people around us and you know what it's cowardice and it's laziness and these people are using religion to justify it nah mate you're a coward and you're lazy don't try to pin it on the religion mate yeah blame yourself say i'm a coward i'm too weak the islam doesn't tell us to sit on our backside all day so it's important guys critical thinking yeah analyze media know how what what sort of logical fallacies are used know what persuasive techniques are used and look into history look at the previous wars that have taken place you got books uh, Howard Zen Noam Chomsky Norman Fil Finkelstein uh, John Perkins John Pilger, uh, William Blum, you've got all these people that have written amazing books uh, on history and the, the, the reality, a balanced non-colonialized version of history, not the colonialized uh, government approved history that we're fed constantly, none of that mate, yeah? it's the stuff that, ha that does not necessarily get reported to us and I'm going to end with a few advices that you guys should follow I'm sure you probably know some of this stuff already um, but unfortunately some of this stuff is not going to be promoted by mainstream which is boost your immune system yeah vitamin d3 vitamin c be it tablets be it lemons limes oranges be it even these powders that you can get and that you can put in your smoothie mix it and have it uh, berries 
um, and fruits make sure you guys um, have uh, a, a lot of during this time and sugar yeah reduce your intake of sugar because sugar weakens the immune system also stress weakens the immune system as well yeah I don't have time to kind of get, go into this a really good video is by Dr Bruce Lipton he talks about this and gives brilliant examples but stress sugar but even anger can reduce a person's immune system so remain calm um, breathing exercises are very good there's this guy called the Iceman <laughs> yeah the Iceman he's known for being in ice cold water for many hours and that guy has a breathing technique and he says just controlling one's breathing you know can can work wonders and even if a person is nervous yeah anxious there's uh, a technique that's been developed by US Army SEALs yeah I think you breathe in for five seconds you hold for five seconds and then you breathe out for five seconds I use this even when I need to go on stage and whatnot when I have to host events uh, it's really beneficial but breathing don't underestimate breathing and it gives you time to look into these podcasts and, and learn and diversify your way of thinking so you can survive m more serious things are that, that are yet to come and lastly um, soap yeah washing your hands with soap for 20 seconds dismantles the virus yes it's scientifically proven yeah it was not a conspiracy um, there's a, a fatty layer in the coronavirus and when you wash it with any soap yeah it breaks up the fatty layer which eventually dismantles the virus so that's something definitely to do hope you guys benefited from this and stay safe may Allah give us the most from this situation um, help the eyes of our heart and our brain also open up and not become sheep in society be critical thinkers and may Allah make us such that he becomes pleased with us and may Allah make us such that we can make others such that he becomes pleased with them that's a dua I love to make let's leave it there guys until next time Assalamualaikum <laughs>